Coming up, the Boundaries Commission announced we'll tell you who's on and what their job will be in the lead up to the general election. The straw market taking center stage in the debate this afternoon as lawmakers discuss the do's and don'ts of the new market. Convicted of the most heinous crimes against students, Andre Babal is trying to get his sentence overturned. We'll tell you how that went. And teachers at Yellow Elder Primary say there's no dissent among them. It's Monday, October 10th. Stay right where you are. The Bahamas Tonight starts right now. Covering the islands of the Bahamas, ZNS Network presents The Bahamas Tonight. It's great to have you along this Monday. This is The Bahamas Tonight National Report. I'm Shanique Miller. The Boundaries Commission officially appointed and named Prime Minister Ingram also announcing a shift in population numbers here in the capital. The Boundaries Commission is the body responsible for advising Parliament on whether to adjust the composition of constituencies and or eliminate any. Their work will be based on the population shift and voter registration for each of the 41 constituencies. For more from this morning's session in Parliament, here's Ianthea Smith. Prime Minister Hubert Ingram announcing this morning in the House of Assembly that the commission is now fully constituted with all of its members already appointed by the Governor General. The Prime Minister confirming that these members are House Speaker Alvin Smith who will act as Chairman, Justice Stephen Isaacs, the commission's Deputy Chairman, St. Anne's MP and Deputy Prime Minister Brent Simonet and Mount Moriah MP Tommy Turnquest who both represent the government and Cat Island, Rumkey and San Salvador MP Philip Brave Davis who represent the opposition. It is my hope that the Boundaries Commission, or the Commission, Constituencies Commission, as it is properly called, will meet shortly and make its report as soon as is practicable. <coughs> the Constitution requires the Commission to review the number and boundaries in which the Bahamas is divided at intervals at not more than five years. At the moment, Mr. Speaker, the Constitution provides that the minimum number of seats in the House of Assembly shall be 38. The Prime Minister added that the last Constituencies Commission made its report to the Governor General on March 13, 2007. He added that the Commission is also mandated to be guided by the general consideration that the number of voters entitled to vote for each member of the House of Assembly to be as much as possible the same. Special circumstances such as the needs of sparsely populated areas, the Palmy Islands, some in particular, more so than others, the practicality of elected members maintaining contact with electors in such areas, the size, physical features, natural boundaries, and geographical isolation ought also, must also be taken into account. <coughs> it is my hope and expectation, Mr. Speaker, that we can conclude all matters relating to the work of the Commission, including approval by Parliament during the course of this year, 2011, so as to permit the Parliamentary Commissioner's Office to begin the distribution of voters' cards the first week of January 2012. Prime Minister Ingram also noting that as of Friday, the number of registered voters was pegged at approximately 134,000. He added that here in the capital, registered voters range from a low of 2,869 in Bain and Grantstown to a high of 5,085 in Blue Hills. But here are some other figures. 3,105 in St. Cecilia, 3,157 in Fort Charlotte, 3,218 in Farm Road and Centerville, 2, 4,790 in Golden Isles, 4,390 in Seabreeze, 4,290 in Elizabeth, these numbers, he say, represent a shift here in the capital. Now, over in Grand Bahama, including Bimini, the number of registered voters in constituencies range from a low of 2,619 in West End and Bimini to a high of 3,562 in High Rock. In the Family Islands, the number of registered voters in constituencies range from a low of 1,160 in Maikal to a high of 3,414 in North Abaco. The Prime Minister added that his government is making it easy and convenient for all those eligible to register to vote and once again renewed the government's call for them to do just that. Ianthea Smith, ZNS News. 
And we want to clarify something for you. Earlier during our 1 o'clock radio newscast, we reported that the number of seats in the House will be reduced from 41 to 38. This was not accurate. Fact is, the Prime Minister was reminding House members that, as outlined in the Constitution, the minimum number of seats in the House should be 38. Now, if you heard that earlier and were a bit confused, ZNS apologizes for the error. In this report, Ianthea talks about the debate on the straw market bill. During the morning session, lawmakers began outlining the rules and regulations to govern the new $12 million market. Government officials say they're on a mission to rid the downtown straw market of its flea market appearance, eliminate all criminal activity, and usher in a culture of change for market vendors before anyone enters the new building. If the truth be told, over the years, progressive deterioration of the business environment of the market has occurred. For order. Illegal practices <laughs> and blatant disregard for prevailing policies are commonplace. Harassment of tourists and the general disorderly behavior are the norm. Therefore, our immediate challenge which the Straw Market Authority bill and accompanying regulations seek to address is the determination of this government to reverse this situation and ensure that culture, that this culture is not transferred to the new market. Moving debate on the Straw Market Authority General Regulations Bill in the House of Assembly this morning, Public Works and Transport Minister Nico Grant said over the years, a culture of harassment, illegal practices and disorderly behavior have taken over the market. And in preparation for relocation into the new facility, the government has embarked on a mission to identify those people who are actually operating stalls and their eligibility to do so. The result of this exercise revealed that a, an estimated 128 licensed vendors have been absent from their stalls for a period exceeding one year. In many cases, stalls are operated by unregistered Bahamian and non-Bahamian helpers. Registered operators also illegally subleased to Bahamians and non-Bahamians. But under this proposed bill, Minister Grant says none of these practices will be tolerated. He noted that a disciplinary committee will be established to investigate complaints and make recommendations for suspension, cancellation or reinstatement of a license or registration. Under this new bill, vendors will also be required to pay a lease fee of $5 per day or $35 per week for their stalls. According to government records, as of September 30th this year, only about 200 of 462 straw vendors were up to date with their NIB and business license payments. The daughter of a straw vendor herself, Yamacor MP Melanie Griffin, says the proposed bill makes no sense and is offensive, claiming that some parts are seeking to make criminals out of these vendors. You have been disrespected. Yes. You have been ridiculed yes. and degraded nationally yes. by many who have rushed to form opinions without even knowing the facts surrounding the whole matter. And you have been deceived by those who you sought to work with to achieve what you thought was a common goal. She also questioned provisions being made for future generations of straw vendors in the event of death or retirement. Also contributing to the bill was Killarney MP and Health Minister Dr. Hubert Minnis. Do we want to see babies being born with heads the size of a baseball? Do we want to see babies being born blind with cataracts? Do we want to see babies being born with open heart defects, with heart not on the right, left side of the chest as it is today, but on the right side with gross abnormality? It's essential, Mr. Speaker, that we protect the vendors. Hi, Anthea Smith, ZNS News. Shifting gears, it's been six months since the merger and acquisition of the new Bahamas Telecommunications Company Limited. And while executives say they've made considerable progress in technological upgrades and services being offered, they also say the task to reshape the company has been challenging, both in terms of size and operations. In fact, hundreds of employees have been let go in the process. We get the story tonight from Carla Palmer. Close to 300 BTC employees have severed ties with the company, having accepted the voluntary separation packages since July. And according to BTC's president, Jeff Houston, the process is still ongoing. We feel we've set out uh, 
in a very constructive way with our union partners. As we've got through the initial uh, VSEP program or voluntary separation program, and we feel that's that's been fairly successful for us at the moment. Houston says BTC is targeted 400 for downsizing, meaning that there is still 100 more jobs to be cut. But obviously, we're doing it in a way which tries to negate the the impact on the business as we manage that change and as we manage the the, the, the reduction in our in our colleague headcount. And I think it's safe to say that we're now in active uh, dialogue with our union partners on further changes that we that we feel are, are necessary to the business as we look to, to, to become a much more flexible and a much more nimble and much more uh, customer focused organization. Houston was unable to put a dollar amount on the downsizing exercise as it is incomplete. However, BTC has since hired several people and are looking to recruit more. As part of our rebuild and reship of the organization, we will seek to recruit more Bahamians into the company and we would expect over the coming weeks to actively start recruiting new people into the, into the business, in particular into our, our customer service and retail organization. Houston confirmed that recruitment drive will be launched in another three to four weeks. Carla Palmer, ZNS News. A stern warning from the police tonight would be copper thieves stop. That's just two days after two men were caught stealing the Water and Sewage Corporation's metal pipes off the Frank Watson Boulevard in southwestern New Providence. Today, Director of the Force's National Crime Prevention Office, Superintendent Stephen Dean, explained how these copper wire thefts seriously affect essential corporations, including water, electricity, and broadcasting. Dean admitted that some of the culprits arrested for these incidents are repeat offenders, but he does not attribute the recent theft to a ring. When we steal from these places, the burden and the brunt of it goes on the customer, as the customer and the wider behemoth public. So revenue which is directed someplace else have to be transferred to these areas to make up, which ordinarily is not prepared for these areas. The police will remain vigilant. The police has got to take a zero tolerance approach to these persons. We will spare no efforts to make sure that they are arrested. We have beef up our securities, particularly in these areas of essential services in our communities around the business places. And we can assure you that anyone we found contravening the law will be arrested and will be taken in the front of the courts. Anyone we found receiving these products, they too will be arrested. Dean also outlined metal theft prevention tips for business owners. We want you to secure your property. Put surveillance cameras there if necessary. We want you to put no trespassing signs in these areas. And we say to all of our Bahamian people, if you see anything suspicious, if you see these water pipes, if you see persons taking something that looks irregular, we want you to immediately call the police. You too have responsibility. And we say to you, persons of the criminal mind, please be aware the police will be targeting you.